Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders of KW Bonsai. We're revisiting my bird's nest spruce. I didn't make any videos of it last year because it was uh, recovering. <laughs> um, the last spring we had really nice warm weather. Um, you know, it was like in the teens. And uh, then it suddenly went cold. It went down to like minus 15 and really windy. I had all my trees out on the bench and they they took a beating, especially this tree. All the buds on these branches were just starting to come out and the cold hit it and it killed all the buds and killed all a lot of these branches off. Uh, the only thing that survived was the very top of the tree. So, you know, I, I'm very disappointed. <laughs> I lost all my branches, but I am happy that the tree survived. Um, so we're going to see, I, I think parts of the trunk, there's a bit of dead wood exposed here. And some of this bark is really loose and flaky. So I think we've got some dead wood sections in the trunk that we're going to check out. Uh, we've got quite a buildup of lichen on the tree, which we've got to get rid of. Um, we left some on last time we visited this tree, and it just it's just grown too thick again. It's obscuring the, the bark and everything. So, and we're also going to be repotting the tree. So, it's uh, about halfway through April now. There's still snow on the ground. I can see it right outside the greenhouse now. But the temperatures are supposed to get uh, quite warm in the next few days, and I think it'll stay, you know, close to normal. Hopefully, kind of above freezing. So let's get started on the tree. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of look at what's left, clean up what's left, and then uh, when that's all done, we'll be repotting it. Here's a close-up of the trunk, and see, this is the bark I'm talking about. That's just loose here. And I think we have dead wood underneath it. Yes, we do. There was a branch that was cut away here long ago, like years and years ago. So we're going to expose our dead wood. There's some more bark flaking off here. We'll try and find our live veins. There's definitely a live vein at the back here. I don't know if you can see that right here. So this part of the tree is definitely alive. So we'll, uh, yeah, we'll keep working away at it. Get rid of some of this really loose bark here, which is. So I'm going to start brushing this lichen off and any loose flaky bark that comes with it in hopes of finding what's happening with the tree. Oh, I see another live vein here. I think we'll get rid of all this moss. It'll make it easier to work on the tree without all this clumps of moss around the base. I'll be able to see what's going on better. It's pretty thick moss. Um, as I said, I was kind of, you know, I was pretty disappointed the tree started dying on me, so I just let it recover. I didn't do any work on the tree or anything last year. I just let it grow. And it, it looks like it's doing all right. Its health has kind of come back. I thought I was going to die totally at first. Everything just started dying back, starting from the bottom, going up. Luckily it didn't. The soil's still a bit frozen in here. I'll have to let it thaw out a bit before we work on the roots. Should thaw out in the greenhouse here. Let's get rid of moss. So that moss is frozen on there. Well, at least we can see what's going on with the roots now. I 
think all the roots are alive. It looks like this dead section just stops down here. It looks like all the roots are still feeding the tree, which is good. Just taking some of this old bark off. Some of the dead sections. We'll have to blend these cuts in a little better when we're done. looking pretty good this trunk line. Make an attractive shoddy dead section. I'll finish cleaning up the tree, getting all this lichen off it, and trying to find the live veins. You know, basically seeing what we've got to work with on the tree. So I've got some tools for cleaning up the dead wood. I've got a very sharp knife that I'm using and I've got a file that I can finish the branches with the deadwood and I've got a v-shaped carving tool that I can you know work on fixing bulges and things and making it all look nice so I'm finding more deadwood on the tree and I'm peeling the bark off. I think it's going to have quite a nice attractive deadwood section. Yeah, it's getting there. I've got to find where the live vein ends here. It's all deadwood here. Now we're starting to get into some live wood here. You can tell the live wood from the dead wood, it's not brittle. Uh, got some life to it. You start getting into some sap. So we're getting uh, more deadwood than I thought we'd get on here, but that's good. It'll make the trunk very interesting. So I've got most of the deadwood on the main trunk cleaned up now. I'm working on carving this. There was a branch that was cut off there. So I'm just carving it to still look like a branch tore off there, but just making it a little less noticeable. So I'm just using the V-shaped carving tool and carving kind of the bulk around the the branch was to look less like it was a smaller branch I guess I'm blending it in around the outside of the branch and kind of carving it to look like a branch was ripped off the tree here something like that We're just getting our knife and scraping the bark off. Cleaning it up. So about an hour later, I'm still working on the deadwood. You know, still scraping it, getting it shaped, and getting it off the branches. cut myself once that's pretty good <laughs> um, I'm liking the rugged look of the tree I can see in future
extending some of this dead wood up the trunk especially in some of the areas where it's a little thick the trunk to get a little more taper and we'll get some dead wood coming from these branches uh, I like to keep the foliage of the tree over to this side to kind of counterbalance the slant of the tree so I think the foliage on this side will be very sparse and it'll be longer you know cascading kind of down at the same angle as the trunk almost I think uh, that's what I can see I can see shortening these the deadwood dead branches on this side to just stumps to shift the visual mass of the tree more to the center so it's you know less overhang over here more balance over here so yeah that's my plan at the moment hi everyone we're back to work on day two of the bird's nest spruce uh, my soil is frozen again it froze overnight so we're gonna have to let that thaw before we do any root work to the tree I'm going to start with some cleanup work on the foliage removing any branches that are you know shooting straight up you know bad directions branches that are overlapping like where we have multiple layers on top of each other and that kind of thing so there's a branch here for instance where we have you know a lower part to the branch and then there's a bunch of shoots above it that can be removed so we just keep our flat kind of foliage pads I'm just gonna cut them roughly off until we can see the base of these branches There we go. Here's another branch that has, you know, one layer of foliage here and there's a shoot sticking straight up here that we can remove entirely. We want to keep our principle of dividing one branch into two. So I'm going to get rid of this one, which is our third branch. And then there's another one back here, which is a fourth branch. So it'll clean that branch up for the future. There's another branch here that has one shooting straight up that we'll remove. We're just going through each branch and checking out for structural soundness. Make sure there's you know, nothing weird going on with it. Now some of these branches have some good buds. Um, this branch has one, two, three buds on the tip and it's got two buds down lower here and then even back further we've got some buds way back here so I'm gonna take it back I want to reduce this side of the tree more so I'm gonna take it quite far back so I'm gonna take it right back to here letting these dormant buds in here come out in spring same with this part there's two buds really close to the t to the uh, to the start of the branch so I'm gonna prune it off here this lower branch um, a lot of it died but it's still alive which is really good so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna cut off there's a shoot sticking straight up here we'll get rid of that the rest isn't too bad and I think we'll get rid of that dead wood on top of the branch I don't think it adds any drama to the tree does it maybe we'll just shorten it to here I just don't like dead parts overhanging life foliage but we can uh, you know gin that so it looks quite natural and same with that one we'll keep some dead dead features on it and we'll just cut this one back shorter here too yeah and that branch looks pretty good then I think we're back to the front of the tree so I'm just examining the branch structure here here's another shoot sticking straight up that we can remove like so there's another one in here remove that and there's a 
a little vertical one here that we can also remove. And then I'm just going to take the tip off this one. I've got some buds back here. It's important not to have branches overlapping each other when viewed from above also. So there's a branch, a couple branches sticking straight up here we're going to remove. One right here, one right here, just little ones. Just an effort to clean out the structure. I think there's a branch here that's, you know, crossing on top of all these other ones that we have to remove. So get rid of that one. I think I'm going to get rid of this part of the branch. It's overhanging this lower branch and we have our main branch coming out this direction and then there's like a 90 degree branch coming off of it which doesn't look very good. It could be wired over a bit but it still wouldn't look good. It's got to be removed. So Off it comes. That looks better. You want to keep the interior of all your trees fairly clean because insects like to hide in here. I think I'm going to take the top off this branch and keep the little one down below. Like that. So here's a shot of our overall kind of design. So I think there's a few things I want to change um, and that's the gin over here I think needs to be shortened. Um, I want the tree to look like it's growing off a cliff and it's being battered by the wind on this side. So you know all the foliage is extending out this direction. Everything on this side of the tree kind of dies from the harsh winter winds. So I think we want these gins, you know these dead branches on this side of the tree shorter. So they're maybe just sort of stubs so it looks like you know a branch tried to grow there but it just nature wouldn't let it. That kind of a look. So to do this work I'm going to use my carving tool and again I want it quite short so we're just going to carve away at the branch from kind of all directions. The top, the bottom, the sides. We just kind of want to make it like a point. almost breaking off now. There we go. Yeah, so just sort of a, you know, a little bit of a point like that. And there's another dead branch up higher that we've got to do the same thing to. So we're back to our front view. I think we still have a little cleanup work to do in here. It looks a little heavy. You can't really tell what's going on with the trunk line in this area. The trunk kind of zigzags a bit and all this foliage hides it. So we're gonna thin this down a bit. So I got a shoot sticking straight up here. Get rid of that. Got a little shoot in here I can remove that's growing from the base of a branch that we don't need. And I'm wondering about this one. It uh, kind of covers up our trunk line. It's growing from a weird place. It's almost growing on the top of this branch. I think we'll get rid of that. It's gone. And then we have a vertical shoot coming out the back here. Not real sure if we need it or not. Um, Kind of growing in a weird, weird position. I'll just cut it off shorter. I have a branch back here too. I'm going to show it to you. There's two parallel branches that come out the back, which kind of bothers me. Yeah, so out the back here, I've got one branch coming horizontal here, and there's another one growing right on top of it. They fan out in different directions, which is nice, but I think that's just a future problem for the tree. So I've got to decide which one I want to keep. And we don't want there to be absolutely no foliage in this side of the tree. 
which you mean we keep this one, but then this branch is kind of growing over top of this one, which is okay because it's shorter. I'm kind of inclined to remove this one. It's I don't like the angle it's growing out of the trunk at. It's kind of strange. So we'll get rid of that one. Here we go. Let's do it. Again, I'll leave a bit of a stub. Okay, let's go back to the front view and see how it's looking. Yeah, I think that's not too bad. I think we'll... Uh, We'll trim our apex down here. We can. There's some buds here. We can prune it a little shorter. We want it, you know, fairly round on top eventually to look more mature. If you have like a pointy apex, um, it can kind of give the feeling of a young tree. Yeah, I think a little more clean up on some of the dead wood you know, trimming off some of these spindly ends here. Just to make it look a little more natural, like it didn't just die. We don't want it to look like our deadwood just died last year like it actually did. <laughs> no one has to know that. That's what I'm saying. Okay, there is still one thing bothering me on the foliage. That bend in the trunk right here. Right here. I can't see the bend much because of this foliage is in the way. Um, I do have a shoot out the back here I could trim back to, and I'd like to do that. So I think I am. I'm gonna get a red, it's a pretty major branch sticking out here, but I think in the long run, it'll be better off. Yeah, that looks better. You can kind of see the, you know, the zigzag of the apex of the tree, much better. Yeah, I'm liking that now. It'll need some wiring in future. I'm not going to wire it this year just because it's sort of in recovery mode and I'm repotting it. And I don't want to stress the tree any more than I have to. So I've completed all the work on the tree that we're going to be doing on the upper half of it now. So the next job will be repotting. Um, I still will refine the dead wood in that later on, but uh, I've got a lot of trees i got to repot, so I can't spend a lot of time <laughs> cleaning up dead wood and stuff at the moment, so that'll come later on. So we are going to repot it, so that'll be our next step. We're ready to do the repot now, so first thing we're going to do is loosen up the tree from the sides of the pot. I put this moss back on yesterday just to stop the roots from drying out while I was working on the tree. So I'll get that away again. And let's get the tree out of the pot. This tree hasn't been repotted for three years now. So it's definitely due for a repot. Okay, let's see what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's not a very solid root ball. Uh, there are lots of roots growing. Let's rake it out and see what they look like. Take away our drainage screens here.
the soil's not very crumbly, so I think it uh, is definitely due for some new soil. Soil that's not quite so compacted. The roots that are in here look pretty good. You can see they're not active yet. So we're definitely repotting the tree in the dormant season. Um, some people like to repot spruces. They wait until the buds start swelling, which might be a good idea, but I don't think it hurts to repot them when they're dormant either. It all depends on how much root pruning you do. If you were to do a really severe root pruning, you definitely want to wait till the buds start to swell. It means all the energy from the roots has come up to the top of the tree. And then you can work on the roots. I'm glad the root ball isn't frozen anymore. When I checked in first thing this morning, the roots, the soil was just hard as a rock. It had frozen overnight. so. So I'm just breaking out the roots, trying to be as gentle as possible, not to tear off roots. And it's getting there. I'll just clean all this soil off. So the root system on this tree, this tree was started in the garden out front of the house. And I just bought it as a you know, a nursery bird's nest spruce. And I pruned it down to a single trunk. It had a lot of multi branches on it. And, you know, so I developed it in the garden as a kind of a slanting style tree. And then when I thought it was ready, I dug it up and put it in a pot. And the root system was not very good at first. So we're, you know, always trying to improve it as we repot it each time. So I've got the pot cleaned up. I'm uh, test fitting the tree in the pot and you can see some of these roots if they were combed out in a radial pattern sticking way beyond the pot so we've got to do some trimming. So I'm just going to come in and trim off the longer roots. This tree naturally in the pot has to have a short root system on this side of the tree because of the you know planting it in the pot to the one side you can't have you know really long roots whereas this side can have quite long roots that can be quite vigorous so um, we are going to trim off some of the roots hanging down and trim off some of the ends of the roots just to keep them a little more compact. We're not doing uh, dramatic root work on this tree today. You can see they're still probably a little long. Let's trim a little more off. There we go. When you have a root system that's fine like this, you can trim it back quite far because all these fine roots will take in nutrients for the tree. It doesn't really matter how long it is. Um, you know, these will take over and do the job. There's a few roots. There's one on top here we want to get rid of. Another one here. One here. here. Um, in my video on creating and maintaining a bonsai root base, you, you remember I talked about pom-pom roots, about, you know, here's an example of a root coming and then it, where it was cut off it's grown all these fine roots out the end. So slowly, slowly we try and solve this by reducing the, the number of roots you don't want to do everything at once on our root system. 
reducing, getting rid of some of these roots that are growing up. We do want to expose a bit of the root system on this tree. To give it a kind of a stable look in the pot. Let's get some soil in here and we'll start doing the good stuff positioning the tree. I have built up a little mound of soil here to position the tree on. And again, you're seeing the back of the tree. I'm going to be positioning it from the front, but we'll uh, definitely show you the positioning of it as we get it in the pot. So it's going to sit on this mound of soil. And I'm just getting the angle. Now, before it was quite quite slanted and I'm just just looking at the angles of the tree um, with it the, quite that slanted these roots were quite buried in the ground so if you want to show them we could tilt it as more of an upright tree which I think would look better and I think we're going to do that Roots are all looking good in the pot. Just need to lower it down a bit. Just needs a bit of soil on this side, which we'll put on. Get the soil worked in. I'm gonna put a little more in here too. Okay, I'll uh, spin the tree around and then we'll come back and have a look at it and see if that's the right position for it or not. So I'm just looking at the position in the pot. It's not bad. I like it as a more upright tree. Um, if a tree's slanting too much, it's got to look like it's on a mountain or, you know, a severely slanting tree just wouldn't survive in nature. The weight of snow would just collapse the tree, but I think at this slightly more upright angle it it looks more convincing. It looks like a tree that's growing on the side of a mountain just barely surviving. So I think we'll fill it in like that. I'm kinda kinda liking that. Now this kind of composition you know if you add a rock to the planting it can really add to that mountainous feel so we'll definitely be landscaping the tree in the future it's the uh, you know the soil around the pot for now we won't be doing any landscaping we're just gonna keep the soil mounted up a little higher than we you know would finally like it just to ensure all the roots stay moist in the soil I'm just looking for my root rake here it is and we're just going to work all the soil into the roots, making sure we've filled in all our air pockets and the tree's nice and stable in the pot. Okay, I think we're ready to give the tree a water. Now, we'll have to place some stones around the tree to keep... You can see it kind of wants to lean a bit, but not too bad, but just until the roots start getting settled in. My watering can, it's a Haas, it's a plastic one, I've had it for 20 years, and it developed for the first time a little crack down at the bottom, so it leaks a bit, not very much. So I'm using this one outside for my outdoor trees, and I bought another one and I use it indoors in the plant room. There, that is a good thorough watering. The soil's draining really nicely. I think this tree's going to be happy. I'm going to hold a black background behind the tree so you can kind of see the final look at the tree and everything. Can I get in here? Yeah, so there's kind of the final look of the tree. So in the future, we've got wiring to do on the tree. And we've got landscaping, you know, putting moss and maybe some rocks to give the tree kind of a 
mountainous feel. And we'll be uh, putting some lime sulfur on the deadwood sections. And in future, we'll be carving our deadwood further up into the tree. Kind of integrate that deadwood line right up into the canopy. So that's it for today. Nigel Saunders of KW Bonsai. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.